Parsi Salberg is the Director General of the Ministry of Education in Helsinki, but he's spending more and more of his time outside Finland teaching governments and schools the Finnish way. Finland consistently beats most of the rest of the countries in the OECD in maths, reading and literacy at all levels of primary and high school. The secret, according to him, is to be found in Finland's highly regarded, educate, highly educated teachers. Teaching in Finland is a respected and prestigious profession and it's paid accordingly. Gaining entry to study teaching is extremely competitive and nearly every teacher in the country has a master's degree. I spoke to Parsi Salberg from Melbourne. Parsi Salberg, welcome to Late Line. Thank you. Finland occupies the number one spot as far as the OECD testing standard is concerned, the so-called Program for International Student Assessment. Australia over the last decade, on the other hand, has fallen behind on that same score. What do you think is behind your country's success? Uh, well, you know, we have been working for this current situation for the last 30 or 40 years very very systematically starting from 1970s and I think one of the one of the keys of our, our good performance is that we have uh, systematically focused on equity and equality in our education system and not so much on excellence and achievement like many other countries have done and now we know uh, also through the OECD uh, data and research that the equity is the one that is also bringing excellence, just like it's not only Finland, but also Canada and uh, Korea, for example, are the same. So I think the systematic way of addressing those who are in a special need and need more help uh, is the key. When you say equality and equity, what exactly do you mean? Well, starting from the equitable funding of school system, I know that this, uh, this is a, a, a current uh, issue here in Australia to, to um, think about how education should be funded. We have been doing pretty much uh, those recommendations in the Council report now for the last 20 years where we try to make sure that everybody in the schools, all the schools would get the equal funding and then that the schools would, would be also funded according to their needs. There's been a lot of debate in Australia about school funding by the government, particularly in the past week since the release of the Gonski report. The biggest controversy lies in whether the federal government should be directing part of its budget to the private school sector, the argument being that they are just f helping to fund parent choice. Do you believe that a parent's choice of sending their children to an elite private school should be subsidised by the government? <laughs> This is a very difficult thing to comment on because we don't in Finland we don't have any private schools, and um, I, I don't have I don't know enough about the situation here to to uh, make any comments. But reading the reading the report published, I think the um, the recommendations um, that would be securing more funding, uh, public funding for those schools who have more um, students in need is a right one, but I, I don't want to make any comments on the, the um, funding private schools otherwise because I simply don't know enough about the situation. So how are your schools funded? Our schools are funded very close to what, the, um, what this report is recommending uh, you to do. So we, we give schools a kind of a basic funding equally based on the number of students they have and then we adjust the, sc the school budget based on the school's need. For example, if there are more immigrant children or or uh, pupils from coming from a single parent families, these schools normally receive more funding so that they can deal with these issues um, uh, easily. So there are many similarities in what we are doing now to, to those recommendations in the Conscient Report. Why don't you have private schools in Finland? Uh, because we think, you know, our, our choice has always been to focus more on equity and equality in education rather than choice. These are often seen as a two sides of a of the same same coin that you you either uh, emphasize ch uh, choice a school choice for parents so that the parents can choose the school or then you have it put in a place policies that make sure that all the schools are good and this is what we have been as i said that we have been doing this now for the last 30 or 40 years actually trying to make sure that every single school is a good school in finland and all the schools have good teachers so that that this would minimise the need for parents to choose a school and we are exactly in this situation today. You've spent some time in Australia now. What do you think are the most striking differences between the education systems here and in Finland? 
Well, I think you have a very different approach to um, uh, using collecting data and using data and reporting the school success. I think in a, in a Finnish system we are uh, relying much more on teachers and the school's uh, ability to report to parents and authorities how the schools are doing. Uh, I think the other thing is that we in Finland probably have much more confidence and trust on teachers and principals work whereas here it's, I, I realize that that you have probably much more um, kind of a uh, doubtful situation where politicians and, and media and, and public is, uh, is not so sure that the schools and teachers can do what they what they were supposed to do and this is something that is um, is a big difference between these two countries. Because in Finland you hand responsibility for decisions in education to the teachers. Yeah, that's exactly so and we have been working on this situation systematically now for the last 20 years where we have uh, given the authority and autonomy also to the schools from the central uh, administration and I think this is frankly speaking one of the keys also to this uh, favorable situation that we have internationally. So you mean principals hire and fire their teachers and have a much more autonomous reign over their schools? Exactly and, and I think the more, most important thing in this school autonomy in Finland is that all the schools are both responsible and also free to design their own curriculum uh, as, as they wish based on the qu quite loose national uh, curriculum framework. So financing and, and managing the school is one thing but I think the using teachers um, knowledge and skills that we have in, in our system to design how they want to um, teaching and learning to take place is the, is the most important thing. You've used the word trust how important do you believe that relationship of trust is between the government and the teachers? I think it's a very important, at least it, it, it's very important in our system where we are now in, in a situation where teachers trust their students and principals trust teachers and uh, according to our national surveys parents seem to be most confident with the public school system than any other public institution in Finland. So there seems to be a kind of an overall trust um, in in the the education system, so that also the minister of education can sleep his night peacefully. In the past two years, our government has introduced standardised testing for children as young as five up to year twelve students. Now, our prime minister has billed those test results as a significant resource for for students, for parents, and of course for teachers. Do you agree that this kind of testing in Australian education represents an important leap forward? Well, I have nothing against standardised testing uh, per se, but I think um, how the test data is used uh, to uh, hold teachers and schools accountable and, and um, how the school's performance is uh, made public uh, through websites or media um, I'm not sure that this is the way uh, we should go, at least this is not the way we have been doing things in Finland. Um, uh, anywhere where these types of uh, things had put in place, um, uh, teachers have started to m focus more on teaching to the test and uh, curriculum has narrowed. If the test data is only collected through two or three subjects like it's often done uh, measuring literacy and, uh, and mathematics. Uh, this means that these uh, subjects will become the most important things in a school. And um, the other thing is that the, these uh, knowledge tests often measure only the things that can be measured and not for example uh, problem solving or creativity to the extent that they should be. Um, and this leads teachers and schools to focus on these things more than they, they could do otherwise. Well, the Australian government, on the other hand, actually promotes standardised testing as the most reliable measure of success for students, for teachers, for schools and, of course, for parents. Well, the, we know very well that the uh, inequality that uh, our students have uh, through their parents' socioeconomic background is a it's a very strong uh, um, factor that is explaining their performance and in many cases this is far beyond the teacher's control.
given that you in Finland don't have national testing, how do you know then if certain children are falling through the cracks? What safeguards are in place to, to pick that up? We have good teachers to do this and, and this is basically the only thing we can we can use that the, we have the schools that are responsible to make sure that each and every child is progressing and, and doing well in the school. So it's the teachers, it's just teachers' uh, shared responsibility in the school and the, the principal working with them. And we have no other other means than the school-based um, um, uh, reporting and, and, and teachers' word for this. Here in Australia, virtually anyone can study to become a teacher. You're final year scores at high school don't have to be particularly high and your salary at the end reflects that. How is the situation different in Finland? Well we have probably the, the most competitive primary school teacher education system in the world where we we can only take 10% uh, of the applicants which means that this makes this makes entry into teacher education in Finland very very difficult and it uh, also automatically raises the quality of intake and and then the the, the quality of uh, teachers as well so it's a, it's a very difficult uh, different situation because the teaching has become a very very popular profession among young people in Finland so how does teaching compare to say studying medicine or law well, if we take just the, the, the plain numbers of applicants and accept it, we have more, it's more difficult to get into teach primary school teacher education um, in Finnish universities than medicine, for example. So in Finland, you actually need higher entrance scores to study teaching than medicine? You need uh, at least the equally high high school uh, graduation scores to become primary school teacher than to uh, enter the School of Medicine. How does that higher teacher status affect educational results in Finland, in your view? Um, I think it's a very important thing. Uh, this has created also this, this system or situation in Finland where teachers are very highly respected because of this uh, uh, highly competitive um, way of getting into teaching. And we know that anybody who is graduating from Department of Teacher Education must be pretty good academically and, and, and also uh, as a person um, because of this very strict uh, entry control. In your recent book you observe that Finland stands outside the global education reform movement. You've used the acronym for that as GERM and you've said it's infected the US, it's infected the UK and Australia. What is this virus you refer to? Well, this global educational reform movement is a kind of a way of thinking about reforming education that is uh, uh, based on ideas of competition, choice, uh, accountability, testing. In other words, all these market-based ideas of running the education system. And um, I'm using this term germ because the, I have found that the Finnish way of building good education system is not only different to the germ, but it's almost the opposing um, um, way of, of uh, building education policies and reforms. In what way? Uh, for example, um, if I take the, the competition idea where in, in all of these countries that you mentioned um, um, the policies are built on the idea that competition will ultimately improve the quality of teaching. In Finland we, we don't have these policies. We believe that cooperation and network, networking and sharing other things and, and important things to make sure that everybody will um, be able to um, improve and do things better. Uh, accountability is another one where in many of these uh, inf so-called infected countries schools and teachers and principals are increasingly held accountable through the standardized tests and in Finland we have been trying to build trust and responsibility in, within our education systems rather than accountability. So many of these uh, germ um, um, elements are actually um, opposite to what Finland has been doing. Pazi Salberg, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you very much.